In this tutorial, we explore the use of open source tools to convert LiDAR clouds to digital elevation models, or DEMs. DEMs are regularly used by archaeologists to identify and interpret sites. We'll start by downloading sample LiDAR data from the USGS National Map download site. Then we'll examine how to load, process, and export a subsample of the same LiDAR point cloud data for use in QGIS. Next, we'll use QGIS and LAS tools to convert the subsample point cloud data into a DEM, as well as methods for quickly symbolizing the data for presentation. Finally, we'll return to Cloud Compare and join data across multiple LiDAR tiles before exporting it. This is useful if your site covers an area spanning multiple tiles. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. There are also links to related tutorials of mine that may aid in using LiDAR data within QGIS, as well as links to the data used in today's tutorial. Okay, let's get started. Our first step is to download some cool LiDAR data. So let's have a look at the famous archaeological site of Cahokia, a well-known Mississippian site located east of the Mississippi River in southern Illinois. We're going to go ahead and zoom into the area where Monk's Mound is, and then we're going to go ahead and create our box point. We'll just drag this to sort of encompass the area. We then need to go ahead and make sure we've selected our LiDAR point cloud data, and then we can find products. We can go ahead and shift through here and use the footprint function, perfect, right off and go ahead and find the uh, LAZ or LAS files that we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and use LAZ for this uh, tutorial, but you can use LAS as well. Obviously, LAZ just refers to a zipped form of the LAS file. Go ahead and click on that and then save this to our local directory, which I've already done here. And now we're ready uh, to open this and begin processing and eventually exporting it from Cloud Compare. Cloud Compare is a 3D point cloud processing program. It reads all standard 3D point cloud formats and often loads them in a fraction of the time required by other paid software. Cloud Compare is lightweight, powerful, and completely free. So when we first open this up, we can go ahead and add our uh, LiDAR point cloud by clicking the open button, go ahead and navigate to the LAZ or LAS that you downloaded locally, click open, go ahead and click apply, and then finally yes to the global shift. Basically what this is, is this is going to bring the real world coordinates into something that's more manageable by uh, Cloud Compare. And when we export this, we'll basically have the ability to reproject these back into real world coordinates so we don't have to worry about this stuff messing up our data in any way. So now that this is loaded, we want to go ahead and make sure to select the point cloud file by clicking on it in the upper left hand corner in the file tree. We'll need to go ahead and see how many points. We saw this as we imported it. This is a little over 13 million points. So we're going to eventually reduce this so we can use this with the limitations set in the free version of LAS tools, meaning no file of more than 1 million points can be processed without having to split it up. First thing we can do is go ahead and change how we symbolize this data. So navigate down here to the scalar fields area and in the active dropdown, choose intensity. This will actually produce something that looks more like a black and white image. If you are in a different view, like if you've clicked the left hand button and rotated your file, uh, you can go ahead and choose between different views here you'll probably have something like this centered perspective by nature or when you start and that's fine the right hand tool pans around the mouse button scrolls in and out and then the left hand rotates so what i typically do is i move into the top view you can press eight or you can select this on the side here by clicking the set top view i then also shift into orthographic projection so it's sort of a 2d projection of this 3d data so what we're going to do next is export the subset of ground points in this LiDAR file into its own file. And we do that first by changing the active field to classification under scalar fields. And you can see here some things like the bright green automatically sort of shouts to you vegetation. So what we want to do first with this is we want to use the filter points by value. It's got the little min max and sort of the rainbow color chart between those two so we click on this and what we're going to enter for the range here is 1.1 to 2.1 
If you remember LIDAR classification or point clouds that have been classified, two refers to ground points. So what this does is it basically is going to take all the points that are classified as ground and export them into a new layer. Click export and now you can see it's automatically turned off the initial set and now we have a new set of points. And if we scroll down here to the properties, we can also see that we've cut out the vast majority of these points. We're still above uh, 1 million. In fact, we're nearly at 2 million. So what we need to do is subsample these points to get us into a range just below a million points. Click on the subsample a point cloud. We're going to leave it as space and we're going to just sort of experiment with whatever spacing between points gets us just under a million points. So let's go ahead and start with one, click OK. When that's completed, we can see here that we have uh, a new layer, but it's not actually changed that much. We haven't actually removed that many points. So let's go ahead and delete this. And let's go ahead and make sure we've selected that layer that we were previously looking at. We can also go ahead and turn it on click the subsample again and this time enter 3.1 which I've experimented with before this video to find that to be a good optimum number this gets us as you can see here just below that million point limit and some lidar clouds you can put 0 0.1 0 0.2 it's going to be a very low value so this is a bit of an experimentation here but this is good so now we want to go ahead and save this and what we're going to do is call this Cahokia one dot las click save you're going to go ahead and click ok this is basically kind of reprojecting the lidar point cloud that you're now creating into a real world coordinate and now we're ready to take this into qgis i'm using qgis 3.16 for this video uh, if you've not installed las tools for qgis yet go ahead and look at the description below this video and i have some links to tutorials there that'll walk you through that so we're going to go ahead and look for LAS2DEM. I've already typed it in here. Double click to open that tool and navigate to our Cahokia1.LAS file. We can go ahead because it's good practice to choose Keep Class 2. Remember 2 classification is what you code ground points and LiDAR clouds for. Um, you don't have to though. All the points in this exported LAS file are ground points and they're only that. I like to choose the pixel size of 0.5, but you can fiddle with that as well. We'll keep the other defaults and then save this to a file, which I'm going to name Cahokia1.tif. So we can export this to an image file. So let's go ahead and click Run, and then we can add it to QGIS. Okay, that's finished processing. Click Close, and now we can add our Cahokia1 TIFF to QGIS by double-clicking on it. Give it a moment to display. This looks good. We want to make sure that it's projected correctly. So let's just go ahead and add the good old Google Road base map. Oh, as we scroll out, we can see this is not properly lined up. And so we can go back to Cloud Compare. And what I've done here is I've clicked on the original layer that we imported, although this should work for any of the other exports. And we can look at the properties down here scroll to the bottom and we can see a spatial reference NAD 83 2011 state plain West Illinois FIPS 1202 so we can go back to QGIS right click on our Cahokia TIFF file and we need to go ahead and set our layer CRS now for this I've already looked it up and it has an actual EPSG code of 102672 and there we can see you could also have typed this in I just did this for simplicity's sake click OK click OK again to accept this and this is now disappeared so we need to go ahead and zoom into the layer and as we scroll out we can see this has lined up properly so the only thing left to do here is to think about uh, symbolizing how our lidar data looks so we can go back into layer styling and an easy one that always looks good is just to choose hillshade you can also duplicate this, turn that copy back on, choose the one that's higher up, and then choose single band pseudo color. And I like to choose equal interval and take that up to 10. Also like to invert this color ramp. And then we're going to change this to a opacity of around, let's just do 50%. 
And so we can see very quickly how those two layers really produce a much more stunning visualization. Finally, let's add four tiles to Cloud Compare and quickly look at some of the other tools this program offers. You can download the three additional tiles in the description below. Basically, we want to sort of expand the area of Cahokia that we're going to get LiDAR data for, but this area is spread across four different tiles. Once we've downloaded them, we can add them like we did one, just by dragging and selecting all four files. Click Open, and of course, uh, Apply, and Yes to the uh, global shift again. Keep in mind, you're going to have to click Apply and accept Yes for the global shift for all four. Okay, all four of our tiles are now loaded, so we can go ahead and select them by Control clicking all four. Go into Edit, choose Merge. Do you want to generate a scalar field with the original cloud index? Yes. This will take a moment to run and it may seem like your machine's hanging, but give it a moment. And now we see we have one cloud here. Again, we want to go ahead and scroll down to the scalar fields. Let's choose intensity. We can see this looks very much like a black and white aerial imagery. We can see Monk's Mound. And now we're going to go ahead and use the segment tool to cut out a segment of this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a rectangular selection, click and drag, and then release to set a selection. Segment in, so we're going to basically get rid of everything outside of this green square. Click that, click the check mark. Again, give it a moment as it sort of completes this. And now you can see it looks like we didn't do anything. But if we come back to the tree menu and uncheck the entry above it, now we can see we're only dealing with this. And now we can basically run through the same steps that we've already used. And so here we have this uh, section of Cahokia exported from four different LiDAR tiles. As always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.